Let me see you put your hands together. are going to give God a radical praise today. You ready? When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. Thank you, Jesus, that the darkness flees. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I love you. I give you all my praise. 
You are lifted high, Jesus. You are lifted high. Let's sing it out. Strongholds are coming down. Declare it. And Jesus is lifted high. Strongholds are coming down. And Jesus is lifted high. Strongholds are coming down. And Jesus is lifted high. Strongholds are coming down. And Jesus is lifted high. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Woo! And now as a Calvary kid, you should remember to love God, love others, and love yourself. Ooh. Ace, they said this is where we're supposed to be for season two. But I don't see anybody here in this new kids center. Oh. Well, maybe we're early. We can just wait right here. But I really gotta go. Maybe I can find some contestants. I'll be back. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey. for season two. Today's challenge has many components, but this new truth about God is well worth your efforts. Hey guys, I'm Alex, and this is Craig. Hey! The Bible tells us about a man who lived a long time ago named Gideon, and how God used him to save the Israelites. 
You see, the Israelites started doing some pretty bad things after they moved into the promised land. Nah, 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 nah. Well, not quite like that. More like disobeying God and even worshiping idols. Ooh, that's bad. Yep, and eventually, God allowed the Midianites, another group of people, to take over the Israelites, and boy, did they. Those Midianites ruled over everyone. I'm a bad ruler! Destroyed their crops, and even attacked them. Hey, 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 hey. Things were starting to get so bad that the Israelites had no choice but to cry out to God. Oh, oh God! No, they didn't cry at God. They cried out to God to ask him for his help. Oh, God, help! Well, God heard these cries and knew it was time to come to their rescue. But he wasn't going to do it himself. Nuh-uh. He was going to use a man named Gideon. Gideon! At first, Gideon thought this had to be wrong. Eh. He wasn't sure how God was going to use him to do something so big. But he knew that God is always right, so he trusted him and got to work. To get started, Gideon built a huge army of over 30,000 soldiers. I'll take you and 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 you Yeah. Okay. The thing is, though, God didn't want the Israelites to think they could win this battle without his help. So he told Gideon to announce, those who tremble with fear can turn back. Bye. So many of the soldiers decided to leave, like 22,000 of them. 22,000? Mm-hmm. But even with 10,000 soldiers left, God thought that there were still too many. What? He told Gideon to send all of them down to the river to get a drink of water. The ones who drank water with their hands like dogs could stay, but the rest of them, the guys who knelt down to drink, they had to go. That left Gideon with only 300 people. But Gideon trusted God and knew that he was on their side. God told Gideon exactly what he needed to do to defeat his enemies. He had Gideon divide the soldiers into three groups and gave them all weapons. No, not like those kind of weapons. God told Gideon to give them all trumpets, empty jars, and torches. Wait, what am I supposed to do with these? Just wait for it. Then, in the middle of the night, the army surprised the Midianites by blowing their trumpets, smashing their jars and holding up their torches. The Midianites were so scared that they ran, crying as they fled. Gideon and his army won the battle that night and rescued the Israelites from the Midianites. Yes! There are many times when Gideon could have thought God was wrong. Mm-hmm. An army going from 30,000 to only 300? Pick the guys from the battle on how they drink their water? And take a few trumpets, torches, and jars with you? Sounds crazy, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, because Gideon trusted that God was right and he did what God told him to do, they won the battle. Yes! We can remember that his plans are perfect and that God is always right. Hello, boys and girls. I'm so excited to be able to teach you today's lesson. Today we are looking at how God is always, you guess? God is always right. Can you guys say that with me? Say, God is always right. And so we have an awesome Bible story that we're going to look at that talks all about how God's righteousness is shown through it. And it is found in Judges, which is in the Old Testament. And we are going to be focusing on Gideon. And so God is always right, right? God is always right. And so we're going to be looking at three specific ways in which God is always right. I mean, God is always right in everything and everything and anything that he does, but we're going to be looking based off of our story in three specific ways on how God is always right. And so the first thing that I want to say is this. Does anyone know what this is? This is, let me hear you, a megaphone. If you said megaphone, you are correct, a megaphone. And when I think of a megaphone, I think of people calling out to one another. They're like, hey, come, I need you to come here, right? You're trying to get someone's attention or you're trying to have people look at you or you're trying to call to them like, come, 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 you know? And I think that's the same thing that God does. He likes to call us, right? He likes to call us who we're going to, he's going to call us to who we're going to be. He's going to call us to do things, right? He's going to call us. And so we, we can know this, that God is always right in who he calls us to be, or even in who he calls, or even in what he calls us to do. And so we see that in Gideon. If we look before he actually goes and leads an army, Gideon is seen hiding. He's secretly uh, um, threshing wheat threshing wheat secretly. And then we see that an angel of the Lord appears to him and says, hey, brave and mighty man, 
the Lord is with you. And Gideon is probably like, what? <laughs> me? Are you sure you're talking about me? Because then the angel continues to go and uh, goes on and says, hey, listen, the Lord, he is going to use you to, to rescue Israel once again. And he, this is his response to, to the angel. He said, the Lord, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the tribe. I am the least important member of my family. And he had all of these concerns because he was like, I can't do that. Like, do you know who I am? Like, I am weak. I ain't got nothing. Like, what? how am I going to do that? And sometimes when God calls us to do something or maybe God calls us or what he's called us to, to become, the person he wants us to become, we think like, how can I get from point A, right? The starting point, point A to point B. But that's the beautiful thing of God because God literally tells Gideon in the next line, he says, the Lord answered, you can do it because I will help you. When we seek God and when we build our relationship with him, we are growing and we are maturing and we are becoming the person that God had always intended for us to be. Because God, he sees us right where we're at and he loves us right where we're at in our mess and in our weakness. But the thing with God is that he doesn't want us to stay in our mess. He doesn't want us to stay in our weakness, but he calls us to be to be strong and mighty men and women of God faith, who believe in him, who walk with the Holy Spirit, who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, like who are spirit led, that that's who God wants us to become. So he saw Gideon. Yeah, he saw Gideon where he was, but he knew who Gideon could become. He saw the potential in Gideon. Just like Gideon, God sees the potential in us. He sees us and he says, oh, I have a great and awesome plan for their lives. And oh my gosh, they're going to be such amazing people such an amazing woman of faith, such an amazing man of faith. And he sees us right where we're at, but we have to trust him and we have to say, God is right. When God says that I am, I am bold. When God says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When God says I am this and I am that, and he promises you these things, you can hold on to that and trust and that God is always right. He isn't wrong, he's always right. And so the Lord answered, Gideon and he said you can do it because I will help you you will crush the Midianites as easily as if they were only one man and so now God has um, God excuse me now Gideon has that promise and so as we continue our story the next thing that we see is this this book right and so Ms. Lord, I chose this because I thought what I want to say is that not only is God always right and what and who he calls us to be and what he calls us to do but god is always uh, right in his ways and in his plans so i always think of a planner you know you're writing down your plans your things that you want and god is always right in his plans and so we see it as we continue in gideon's story we see that Gideon goes on to defeat the Midianites. But before he actually goes on to defeat the Midianites, right, um, we see this. We see that he has about over 30,000 men with him. And, you know, that's pretty good going against an, another army with probably thousands of men as well. You know, seem, it, it makes sense, you know, again, going against each other. But... God is like, hey, I want you guys to rely on me fully. So I want you guys to, I want you Gideon to tell the men, if you're scared, go home. <laughs> and so we see Gideon starting off with over 30,000 men and 22,000 of those men leave. So now he's left with only 10,000 men. And now you're like, okay, you know, we're still in the thousands. They have thousands, we have thousands, so you know, it's not too bad. You know, we're, we should be fine, we should be fine. But then God says again, he's like, watch how they drink water. And based on how they drink water, that those are the men that are gonna stay with you. And those are the men that are going to help you uh, rescue Israel. And you know how many men were left over? Anyone remember the Bible story? You hear it? There were 300 men left. And so Gideon's probably like, God, I know it's your plan to rescue us, but this ain't looking like it's gonna rescue us. How are we gonna go 300 men, this little group of men, against thousands of soldiers, against thousands of other men? Like that doesn't seem, it seems impossible. It seems like it, it doesn't make any sense, right? Because sometimes what God is gonna call us to do may not make any sense in the moment, but there's always a plan. There's always a reason behind what God does. Because God doesn't do anything just to do anything. God is very intentional. And God, he always has a 
plan and a purpose behind the things that he calls us to do and, the, and his plans and in his ways. And if we choose to stay in that will and we choose to continue to walk by faith and not by sight and not by fear, we're able to see what God was trying to do during that process. Because eventually, right now, it doesn't make any sense, but we see in the end that they do have the, the, they do have the victory. They defeat the Midianites, right? And so even though the plans may not make sense right now, maybe God has called you to do something, or maybe God has told you, hey, I want you to go, you know, do this or do that, and you're probably like, what am I gonna do? Why would I do that, right? But we can trust that there is a purpose behind it. There is a reason to it, because God is always right in all that he does. His word in, in Psalms 1830, it says, as for God, his ways are perfect. Like his word is flawless. And those who dwell and take, or he shields those who take refuge in him, right? So we can trust in his word because it is perfect. It's not gonna lead us into these, uh, into a wrong way or into a bad path, but God's ways are always good and always right. So we see that God is always right and who he calls us to be, what he calls us to do. God is always right. In his plans and in his way right even though it may not make sense and because we continue to look on to our story and we see the last thing which is a clock because ah, we can trust that God stay <laughs> that God is always right on time and we see that because that same night when Gideon was left with 300 men God knew the exact time that they needed to go and to defeat the Midianites. And so the Lord said, he commanded Gideon, get up and attack the camp. I'm giving you victory over it. And so Gideon, he takes his servant, he goes and he, he hears this dream that uh, one of the men have, uh, a friend of his had, and it's confirmation. God is confirming that they have it, they can take it, it's theirs. And so they are able to defeat the Midianites by blowing their trumpets and yelling out and breaking the jars and, and they scare the Midianites and they run away from them. And, and you know, it's not typically your normal battle that you see, right? But remember what God said? Ooh, remember what God said? He said this, he said, you can do it because I will help you. This is what the Lord told Gideon in the beginning. He said, you will crush the Midianites as easily as if and so we see that it was so easy. They didn't have to actually go and fight, fight, right? But they were able because they relied and they knew that God's ways were the right way, was the right way to do it. They could trust him because sometimes in our lives we want to say, but God, that doesn't make any sense. Like I know the right way and I'm going to do it in my timing, my way. And, and what I know about me, I'm going to do it how I want to do it. And it's going to, and it doesn't work out when we try and do things in our own strength. But when we rely on God and we rely on him and know that he is always right in all he does, then we can trust that we are going to have victory in the end because he is always, always right. He's always right on time. Even when we've been praying for that thing and we haven't seen it happen, keep praying, keep pursuing because God, he's building your faith during that time. And the timing will come where God is just going to just bless you. And that thing that you have been praying for and believing for is going to happen because that is who God is. God is always right on time. And so today, I want to pray for you guys. And I want you guys to remember that God has got your back. And that God, through everything, is always right. So I want you guys to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you guys to, um, to place your hand over your heart. And I want you guys to just ask God. Say, God, help me to trust you. Help me to trust your plans for my life. And ask him to lead you. If you ask, you shall receive. Some of the things that you are wanting for, you don't have because you haven't asked him yet. And God's saying, ask me. Ask me. If you want peace, or if you need clarity, or if you need joy, or if, you, or if you're asking for uh, seeing a, a family member be healed, or you're praying for a family member to be saved, ask for those things. Ask him. Ask him. Pray about it. 
and watch him work. And so God wants you to step out on faith because he's always right in everything that he does. So as you bow your heads and you close your eyes, I'm going to pray over you guys. Jesus, I pray right now that you would bless each and every single kid, leader that is under the sound of my voice. I pray right now, Lord, that you are crushing the lies of the enemy, Father God, that they can know the truth and that the truth is, is you are always right, that you are good. And I pray right now, Jesus, that as they go throughout their lives, that they would rely and that they would remember this word, they would remember your truth and that your ways are perfect. Your word is flawless. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing, there, you don't make mistakes, God. That's not who you are. You are a God who is always right. And I pray, Lord, that they would rely on your word. They would trust in you and that you would continue to just bless them, continue to just help them to just pursue you, help build their faith, Lord. I pray that as they grow and mature in their relationship with you, that, that they are just growing and maturing in their faith. And Lord, that you are empowering them. Holy Spirit, use them, speak to them. Holy Spirit, give them the boldness that they need to trust you. Speak to them, Holy Spirit, right where they're at. And bless them, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you. And in Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Amen. And you guys can stand up today. We're going to go into a time of worship. All the children of God, it's time to give him some worship. Today he is awesome and he is holy and he loves you so much. And this is our chance to show God right back that we love him. We can show God that we love him by spending time with him in worship. So will you join me today right where you are? Just take a, take a moment and lift up your hearts to God. We are children of God. We are who he says we are. And we can sing out from the top of our lungs that I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. So I want you to sing that out with me today. And when we get to that part, I want you to say, yes, I am. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, he 
the children of God. Come on, give them some worship today. Can you get free in God's presence today? He loves you. He is for you today. Thank you, Jesus. I am chosen, not forsaken. and you take good care of us. Hallelujah. We are going to play trivia pop quiz, true or false. The kids will step into which side they believe is true and which side they believe is false. All right, I'm going to read the first question. Play along if you believe which side they should go on. Point to that side of the screen. True or false, over half the world's species live in a jungle environment. That is correct, that is true, good job. Question number two. Tarzan is a famous fictional character who is raised by dogs. That is correct. False is correct. They, who was he raised by? Good job, apes. All right. Tigers are the world's largest cats. Wild cats. That is true. If you stood on the true side, you are correct. All right. Question number four. God is sometimes right. That is correct, it is false. Gideon went from having a ton of men to fight to only having 300 in his army. Correct, that is true. And last but certainly not least, Gideon's army used trumpets, and empty jars with torches in them to defeat the Midianite army. That is correct. How many did you guys get correct? Hey guys, this is Pastor Jen and I'm standing right here in the brand new Calvary Kids Center. We are so excited. Only one week away from our opening weekend on Friday night, October 2nd, we're going to have a ribbon cutting night, a movie night, and you can even tour the kids center. And then Saturday, October 3rd from 10 a.m. till noon, we'll have the kids center open for tours. And then Sunday, October 4th is our very first services in the kids center. I can't wait to see you there on opening weekend, October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. It's going to be amazing, awesome, epic, and you don't want to miss it. I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.